Some things have been going on on the internet and in news in general that are just shocking. And I really want your opinion. I want to know what you think. On any of these stories that I'm going to go ahead and touch on today, just let me know what you're thinking or feeling about them because I have some thoughts and some feelings of my own. One of the stories that I'm going to talk about today directly affects me actually will probably affect a lot of us. It's in effect, it's happening, and it's I'm saying affect a lot, but it's a thing, and it's kind of a big deal. So we're gonna talk about some stuff today, we're gonna hang out, we're gonna get our feelings out there, and just really chat with each other about you know stuff that's been going on, because that's what we're here for. We're here to just talk and, and have a moment and hang out, and if that sounds cool, stick around, because I'm about to get into it. But before I do, if you haven't already, you know the drill, like, subscribe, come hang out on my channel. It'd be really great to have you here. And with that being said, Let's get into today's video. So the first story I want to talk about is James Charles' new makeup brand that is set to launch in summer, which is now. I believe it's coming out any week now, uh, according to James Charles. The brand is called Painted, and it was met with a lot of controversy. He was collabing with uh, individuals and, and those who were big fans like Jojo Siwa and the whatnot were not happy to see these collabs going on. There was a um, contest that he had put out there for people of all walks, even older people like myself. And the people that he ended up choosing were people that had a pretty decent following already. There weren't any like regular people. So that was something that was a pretty big deal. There were folks that were kind of up in arms about that one. And I can see why, because a lot of people entered and they were having problems with entering and it, it became very clouded and unclear about when the people were being chosen and then all of a sudden he chose people and they already had a following. So it really, it wasn't as inclusive as he had made it out to be in the beginning. So there were a lot of people that were really upset about that. He did make a savvy move in including people in the decision making or at least he wanted to make it seem that way with like blush swatches and, and shades and things like that. And what do you think? This, that, and the other. I have an update. I loved reading the comments on that first video. Your guys' feedback was so incredibly helpful and it was really exciting bringing you guys in on the behind the scenes process. We will definitely be doing more of that. I don't know, I guess that's that's you know one way of, of getting people involved and excited about it. He does have a fan base. Although with everything that's been going on with James Charles, it's kind of, I personally don't support James Charles because of the things that have gone on and um, just have been kind of brushed under the rug. It sucks and it is ridiculously embarrassing to admit this, but I think I have to, and that is that I'm desperate. This video isn't really gonna be focused on that, but I, I do wanna put that out there. A, I'm not a James Charles fan, but I do want to talk about the makeup line because Painted has been announced and, you know, the commercial, it's all been put out there on online and all that. He's advertising all over the place about it and it hasn't exactly come out yet. But when he was talking about it, he's saying that it's this revolutionary thing and he's like, oh, we got to go and there was this lab moment where the yellow is cracking and we've got to, we're going to work night and day until we get this right. And I don't know if that was to push it further out or, you know, give a little more time, give a little more buzz. I don't know. But basically what it is, is, um, is a face paint. So do I think that it's revolutionary? I think it's very difficult to come up with something new these days because there's so many things that are out there in the makeup space. This is a blush that's from Glossier. It's been around for a while. It's the cloud paint. So face paint isn't new and it's not something, even though he had said something to the effect of, oh, even though it may seem a little daunting, you'll be able to use it. It won't be a problem. You'll be able to have fun with it and paint your face and it's going to look fantastic. Honestly, I can tell you my sister, my adopted sister, who I love with my whole heart, she likes to put on makeup, you know, and have fun with it, but she's a novice, you know, she's not well versed in makeup. And if I were to hand her something like this and say, okay, go ahead and do your eyeshadow, she would look at something like this and be completely befuddled, would not have any clue what to do with this. You know, it's, it's, um, I don't think it's something that is for everyone. You know, I would imagine that once things get rocking and rolling, he's going to come out with other items. But the main focus has been these face paints. And um, I don't think that it's something that is going to be something that a lot of people are going to be comfortable using. Kind of an odd choice, if you ask me. But it's his brand. It's, it's yet to launch. We're all still waiting. And I think, in my opinion, even though the makeup world is just oversaturated with influencer brands, 
I don't know the longevity of, of his brand, what's going to happen, but I can tell you people will buy it when it does finally launch. The people that love and support him are going to buy it and they're going to give it whatever glowing reviews. The people that despise him are going to buy it and they're going to bash the hell out of it. I mean, I can already see it coming. It's going to probably, in my opinion, if I were to, you know, look into the crystal ball of my brain, <laughs> I would say that it's going to be like a big like moment, but basically like a big flash in the pan and then it's going to be done unless he comes out with other things that are actually innovative and, and interesting it's it's kind of like a wait and see moment but i want to know your thoughts are you going to buy anything from the brand when it does finally launch are you excited about it are you opposed to it let me know what you think in the comments because i'm curious i want to talk about this because i have my feelings <laughs> i feel feelings and i want to share them with you and i want to know your feelings so let's go ahead and talk about it the next story i want to get into is patrick star is in trouble this is still a story that's ongoing as i'm filming this right now but patrick star was at a barbie premiere and was in this blue gown and doing a catwalk moment when he knocked someone over and apparently it was a young girl who is uh, disabled there with her brother taking photos at the time <laughs> It seemed that Patrick didn't even notice them, that he had knocked over this young girl and just continued to walk and then, you know, took the pose moment for all the photos and all that stuff. Well, people were up in arms. I went into this young man's post that I saw on Instagram and the comments are just scalding. Huh? And then I went ahead over to TikTok and I had found this video that Patrick Starr had posted. And he had also commented on the person's post on Instagram. But this is what Patrick had to say. It started online and it's been seen by millions of people. And so as your video is still up and your caption calling me ableist Barbie, I, I can't bring myself to feel better about the situation, even though I've handled it with Jennifer and Pete privately. I mean, that's that's a lot. I, I My heart kind of goes out to Patrick because honestly, he's someone that I see as the least problematic in the beauty space. I mean, I, I feel like everyone in the beauty space has had their moment or whatever, and I'm sure this kid is far from perfect. But I feel like in that apology moment that he posted on TikTok, that he is being sincere and does want to make right what went wrong. I, I do feel like it was an accident and maybe in the moment, I, I can't help but defend the kid. I, I don't know, I wasn't there, but from my perspective, I feel like in the moment, walking by all the cameras and all that stuff, I think it just kind of happened and it was an accident. I don't think it was intentional. I don't think that Patrick Starr was trying to just, you know, knock people over and then, you know, give the peasant looking down the nose moment. I just, I, I don't know. I, that doesn't go along with the person. I, I don't feel that in the personality of Patrick Starr. But let me know what you think. Have you heard anything about this story? And if you haven't and you're just seeing it here today with me, let me know your thoughts in the comments. The next one we're going to talk about is a creator called EDP445. EDP uh, made headlines trying to meet up with a 13 year old. He was actually involved in a sting operation. There were other creators that wanted to catch him doing this. Well, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake and then go back home. Um, there was, you know, nothing that was going to be sexual involved because I'm not like that. You know, well, obviously the text messages and stuff like that, you know what I mean? It wasn't the first time that he had been caught trying to reach out to minors. He had a pretty decent sized platform and uh, had been posting for a while, but he was basically caught doing something he shouldn't be doing. And it was proven that he was actually going after minors and it was a, a big thing. So he left the platform and has recently come back with an apology. And this apology has some people sympathizing and other people who just think that this person should go away and stay off the internet altogether. I want to take full responsibility for my actions that happened on April 21st, 2021. Uh, for those of you who may not know what EDP is apologizing for, it's for essentially soliciting a minor. For this, he lost his entire career, and since then he has desperately been trying to claw his way back to the internet because it's all he knows. It's his only home. He should be counting his lucky stars he's not in jail. He must have had fairy godparents and they granted him one last wish and it was to avoid jail time. He is 
The only reason he's not there is because the investigation and all of the evidence was conducted online, so authorities usually don't use that in, in like actual prosecution or anything. I do know a little bit about the story. I remember hearing about it when it first broke, and my thoughts on this are, I know this person's getting threats and the apologies and all that stuff are, are happening and he's trying to come back and is having a hard time finding jobs or staying in a, a place of residence because people dox him and they know who he is and, and it's difficult for me to find sympathy and that's putting it mildly. I think EDP should seek gainful employment elsewhere and just stay offline altogether. I think what happened is, is justice and I'm surprised that he is uh, not behind bars, if you want to know the honest truth. I'm surprised that uh, he's still out in, in society, just much like, you know, James Charles, surprised, you know, with these individuals who are doing things that they shouldn't be doing and are still, you know, among us. It's, um, it's a hard subject, but because it's such a big story and it is important that we protect our kids and we are in the know of what's going on out there. Not that I'm a mom or anything like that, but I don't have to be a mom to care about kids. I, I'm a great, wonderful aunt. I love to spoil my niece and nephews, but I care about children and I want to keep them safe. And people like EDP and I also, my opinion, James Charles, it's just, just people that I feel like we need to protect our children from and just be aware of, of who they're corresponding with and uh, just stay on top of it because there are people out there that will seek to manipulate and take advantage of kids and have no remorse about it. So it's a, it's just something that unfortunately is out there in the world and, and EDP is one of those people and I just don't think that he needs a platform. That's my humble opinion, but you let me know what you think in the comments. I know this is kind of a controversial topic, I get it, but I still think it should be out there so that, you know, we're aware. That's all, just wanted to talk about it and get your thoughts. And the last story I wanna share with you guys today is that the actors have joined the picket line. So the Screen Actors Guild announced the other night that they are in fact going on strike and Fran Drescher came forward and had this to say. I cannot believe it, quite frankly, how far apart we are on so many things, how they plead poverty, that they're losing money left and right when giving hundreds of millions of dollars to their CEOs. It is disgusting. Shame on them. They stand on the wrong side of history. It was a very passionate, very fiery response to the lack of what producers and, and Hollywood and whatnot were giving to the actors who are a huge contribution to entertainment. So now the actors are on the picket line with the writers and it is something that hasn't happened since the 60s. So this is a pretty huge deal. You got the writers on strike, you got the actors on strike. I mean, it's all happening. Basically, that means that with premieres and film festivals and things, anything that's going to promote uh, new shows or any new movies or things that are coming out are at a complete standstill. So actors won't be allowed to uh, come forward and promote these things because they'll be crossing the picket line. And they're not going to stop until their needs are met so that they can continue to live in the economy that we have today. And it's understandable that they're not wanting co to continue to perform if they're not getting the compensation that they're required or needed or you know deserving of for what they contribute to Hollywood. So it's understandable to me. With the actors on strike and the writers on strike, this basically means that Hollywood is completely shut down. It's like Hollywood is dark at the moment. And that's kind of scary for someone like me who is uh, part of the crew. I am a craft service. I feed you know TV and movie people and Currently, with you know grips and lighting and, and everyone else, we're all out of work right now, trying to find gainful employment while we wait out the strike, trying to you know make it as best we can. There are people out there with you know mortgages and, and kids, and we all have got families and stuff to feed. We don't have the producer money, most of us, and it's just it's been a real struggle. So, what does the future hold for people like me? Well, I guess stay tuned. So yeah, those are the stories that I wanted to sit down and share with you guys today. Let me know what you think of the content that I've been doing. I hope that you've been enjoying it because it's free. <laughs> it's something that I can do right now. But yeah, that's going to do it for me today, kids. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching. As always, I really do appreciate it. And I will catch you all in the next one. Bye.